two summers ago, I swapped out the lead acid batteries on this Ryobi lawnmower with lithium batteries, and I have zero regrets. Well, okay, may maybe a small one regret. I never swapped out the monitor that checks what your battery life is like, shows you 100% or 50% or five, and it doesn't work correctly with lithium batteries. So today, we're gonna take care of that. This is a monitor that's meant for lithium batteries. We're gonna install it, get it running, and see how it works. Let's get started. Now you'll need a few things to actually make this happen. You'll of course need the battery monitor itself and it comes with some wiring to make this happen, but you'll immediately find out that this will not fit in the hole where the old battery monitor exists. It, the hole is too small. So you'll need a way to enlarge that hole. You can either use a Dremel and kind of just bore your way the whole way around or a step bit, which is what I'm going to use today. I'll link both options below. Go with whatever option makes sense to you. And if you bought the particular kit I have, you'll find out that it doesn't come with all the wiring you need. It needs a wire that ends in bare wire on one end and a circular connection on the other. So you'll need, of course, that circular connection, the wire, a crimper, and wire stripper. Now I'll also link below a kit that has that wire so that you don't have to do this if you don't want to. But I'm gonna show you how to do this in case you already have the kit that didn't come with the necessary wire. This video assumes that you have either already installed lithium batteries or are in the process of doing it. So I'm not gonna go through the entire process of getting the batteries out. You should already know how to do that. If not, check out my other video where I go through that process. Okay, so I just wanna address a few things real quick. Your setup probably looks different, in part because I removed the battery covers that are normally here. They cause me more trouble than they're worth when it comes to filming things. You probably still have yours. You will have to make a modification to them. We're gonna carve out a section here to make room for the shunt we're going to install. Additionally, we'll be redoing this wiring. This is the standard wiring for when you don't have a lithium monitor. We will take this battery cable and move it back to this section here in order to make room for the big shunt that we're installing. It just won't fit across this bar and it needs to be connected to the battery cable that runs right here. But before we do anything else, we're gonna make the new monitor fit here. The hole for the old monitor is not large enough to accommodate this. We'll have to take the top off and then we'll talk the two different ways we can enlarge the hole. Okay, the screws are out, so this whole thing should just lift up. And we'll need to remove this bracket here, along with this wiring here. I'm just gonna take a quick picture of everything, make sure I know what's what, what's what's what, in case anything gets moved. We're gonna remove these wires here, which we won't need anymore. Then we'll need to remove these two nuts. And as you can see, the new monitor is just too big to fit through. So in my case, I'm gonna use what's called a stepper bit. This is tiered and should get our hole to exactly the size we need. These do cost a little bit of money. I'll link this down below. If you already have a Dremel with a sanding wheel, you could use that to just enlarge the hole. It would take a long time, be very loud, but it'll get you there. I prefer to go this, it'll be faster. Just be very careful that we don't drill through the wires. Let's see if it works. Ah, got it. There. We got this in, we will have to attach the bracket to the bottom. All right, 
we will hook this up after we get the batteries wired. And that's what's next. Okay, next step is to install the shunt for the battery monitor. Now, quick reminder, I'm not an electrician. Do all this at your own risk. And I'm not responsible for anything that happens if you follow these directions, they could be wrong. First thing we're gonna have to do is actually redo all this wiring. We need to bring this battery connector back to here. So we're gonna have to remove these connectors. Always start with negative, then move to positive when removing connectors. So we have a short jumper over here, negative to positive, of course. We're gonna take another short jumper and move from here. Again, always connect positive to negative when reconnecting these things. Similarly, I'm gonna take a jumper across here. You may need to re-bend slightly. Our system back in place. And then our battery charger connector will go back here. But we're adding a new piece. This is our shunt. And you're gonna look for the B minus. There's a P minus and a B minus. And the B minus is gonna go in the negative and connect with this as well. Neither of these bolts seems long enough for me. So I went and got a longer bolt that should fit this as well. I'll put the dimensions on the screen, both in metric and imperial. We just have to reconnect, disconnect this real quick. So here's a new longer bolt. Now we take off the other bolt. Probably should take it off first. Okay, now for the quote unquote fun part. The screen section here is for the positive wire. If you bought the kit I bought, it didn't come with what you need. You need bare end wire pieces to go into here and a round lug nut to go over here. We're gonna make one, but I'll also link a kit that just includes that. Okay, we need a length of wire long enough to go from here to here essentially. We're gonna kind of guesstimate that. I don't mind there being some extra. Okay, now we're gonna unscrew this wire, this spot right here. Insert the wire. Retighten the screw. And there we are, crimped together. And now that goes into here. Put this back in. Success. Okay, now last thing to do here is connect this final wire. This is what's going to go to from the shunt to the monitor. We're just going to plug this into here. Make sure you face it the right way. And we're done for this moment. We push everything back in, make sure everything's properly reconnected, and we'll connect this up to the main monitor. Okay, now we need to connect the shunt with the monitor. We're going to feed this cord through here. Yep. Connect.
already we've got feed, but we're not fully reconnected yet, so it's not gonna work yet. Okay, now everything is reconnected and going. So the next thing we would need to do is completely charge the batteries. I've already done that. Then we need to tell it how many amps and what percentage is that. Press and hold this little amp button in the middle. Two, there we go. And that's correct, I'm at 100 amps, so I'll set that. Then we'll press and hold the percent. One, two, three, and we're fully programmed. And now we know it's 100% at 100 amps, and as we use it, it will drain at a reasonable rate. Head back to my other video and set everything back up as normal to finish putting the mower back together. Okay, and that's how to replace the monitor in this Ryobi lawn mower so it works with your new lithium batteries. The only thing else you need to know is that this monitor is always active, so it will always drain a little bit of energy, but it's a very small amount. It really shouldn't affect anything. I hope this helps. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this, and until next time, bye.